Nope. You have to earn that relationship. You got to get them to the point where they know, like, and trust you. And everything, everything I have ever done in marketing is based on that. It's always about the relationship, the brand. I want you to be an influencer. And that was the concept behind ad traffic. We wanted to talk about the whole concept of a fan base. What's a fan base? When am I marketing to strangers? Who do I market to? If I have a fan base, should I, how should I be working them? How do I monetize them? What do I do? So from time to time, we like to kind of come back to the fundamentals and the concepts behind all this. So the idea, the real idea behind this really comes back to the, the sheer fundamentals of marketing. And I've had the same sermon for over 30 years. There are only two marketing functions. You're either growing your database or you are nurturing your database or you're creating new connections or strengthening existing connections or he or she with the most friends wins. It all comes down to the same thing. The people that do the best are the ones that know the most people, that have the most fans, that have the most real clients. Because in marketing, we've and it's never changed. It's always suspect, prospect, customer, client, champion. Everybody starts off as a suspect, a stranger that doesn't know you or whatever. And then we try to move them from suspect to prospect. What's a prospect? And the definition of a prospect is not somebody you're working on a deal with, but it's somebody who has positive expectation for future interaction. If I say, hey, I'll put you on my mailing list. And, oh, great, more crap for my junk box. That's not a positive expectation. But if I know that you're going to be in front of me and I don't dread it, uh, look forward to it would be ideal, but I don't dread it. That's what we call the prospect. I'm just trying to turn suspects into prospects so that I can stay in front of them consistently because it's a timing game. I don't sell houses. I don't sell mortgages. I intersect with somebody else's decision to refinance, cash out, consolidate, buy, whatever. I have to be there at that right time. And the only way to be there at the right time is to be there all the time. I just need to get somebody in my database that I can stay in front of consistently so that I can, and then build that relationship, strengthen it so that when the time comes, I'm in the right position to be able to do that business. So for me, all marketing is either growing or nurturing a database, a fan base, my connection list, and by the way, beyond prospect, well, customers next. Yeah, I want prospects to turn into customers. Pretty self-explanatory. A client is a customer that considers you their person and will continue to, oh yeah, Bill's my guy. I, when you are their person for real estate or mortgage or whatever, you are now not a customer, you are a client. And then last is champion, somebody who will send you referrals, somebody who's telling other people, oh, you got to use Bill, Bill's my guy. And all I'm trying to do with every person in the world is change their status. I want to change a suspect into a prospect. I want to change a prospect into a customer. I want to change a customer into a client. Just did this for somebody else. And we were talking about just that, the whole suspect, prospect, customer, client, champion. And by the way, real stat, in Q1 of 2022, this year, 89% of borrowers chose a lender based on relationship. Same stat I quoted the first time in 2009. And with everything that's going on and people are talking about, oh yeah, millennials, they're going to pick, you got to be online, you got to, yeah, 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 yeah. It's still relationship. It's still, whether it's your relationship with somebody I know, or I feel like I know you, whatever, but I'm choosing you based on my comfort level with you, the person, not based on pricing or marketing or the company. It's been 11% that goes over there. As long as I can remember having access to that stat, 89%, 89% are making this decision emotionally, not logically. So how do I win that emotional game? And that's, and by the way, these are stats that came out of some really cool research done by Keller Williams over years that strangers have about a, a, a one-tenth of 1% 1 chance of converting 
uh, or excuse me, one one thousandth of one percent chance of converting. And then they they call them loose ties, moderate ties, and strong ties. And I, I can tell you that the eight to twelve percent has held true throughout uh, uh, the decades for me. That we will consistently, if you have a database that is properly nurtured and you are top of mind with the people in that database, you will pull an average of about 10% a year out of that database. And some people will push that as high as 16% annually, 8% pretty conservative, but it's not just going, oh yeah, I got your name on my database. Now I got an 8% chance of getting a deal from you every year. Nope, you have to earn that relationship. You gotta get them to the point where they know, like, and trust you. And everything, everything I have ever done in marketing is based on that. It's always about the relationship, the brand. I want you to be an influencer. And that was the concept behind ad traffic. Social media outperformed CRMs. Uh, and I was really excited by that because I got to stay in front of people consistently and I could just post all the time. And if I'm posting the right stuff, I stay top of mind. I could only reach about 15, max 16% of my friends on Facebook. I need bigger numbers. And the idea was, well, you know, nice content. Now add some traffic. How do we get out in front of bigger numbers? But it's not just about going out and selling. See, I do more lead gen than anybody you will ever meet. I spend tens of thousands of dollars a month on lead gen or now probably hundreds of thousands. But I don't see a lead as a deal or a not deal. I don't think I've ever talked to anybody that didn't complain about leads. Oh man, I'm getting too many bad leads. Blah, blah, blah. I don't believe in bad leads because I'm not looking for deals. I'm looking for connections. As long as I get their data and make them like you. Spend a half an hour on the phone with them. Talk about their kids, do whatever. If they like you and we have their information, now I know if I can create an opportunity for them to finance, buy, consolidate, whatever. And now I've got the relationship and I can stay in front of them. I was trying to grow databases, not do deals. Mind you, the deals come when you're doing lead gen, but I only wanted to grow databases. If you really make your database your obsession, my brand is my obsession. It's a revenue producing asset that has nothing to do with mortgage or real estate. Nothing matters like building a brand or a following. So the idea behind ad traffic was simple. I'm trying to move people from suspects, complete and total strangers up that funnel or give you the ability to move them up that funnel. Suspects, suspects, they're targeted. We take posts and we push them to whatever targeting is allowed. And by the way, it looks like we might get more targeting opportunities in the future because Facebook has settled with HUD and, and some of the strategic ad category ridiculousness might lighten up in the future, but it doesn't really matter. Right now, I can still target people that are looking at mortgage calculators and appraisals and refinance and single family residences and stuff like that. So whatever is allowed, and we update it all the time, that's who we push. Those are the strangers, suspects. And before, I was trying to get, get them to connect with me somehow, a, a conversation, a lead. Again, when I get a lead, I'm not looking for a loan. Oh, no, this person wants a loan. This one doesn't. This one wants a loan. This one, no, no, no. I'm looking for somebody that I can start a relationship with because I don't care if they want a loan or to buy a home or sell a home right now or not. I want their next deal whenever it happens. So the goal, the goal when we did this was, was just growing that database. Well, the goal online for me when I go out to these strangers is to find the ones that show any sort of affinity to you. And I really need a better analogy, but for now, it's the best one I can think of, which is, let's say we're young and we go to Vegas and we're hanging out and we're in a great big nightclub and and you're single and your nerdy friend bill says hey look i hacked the security cameras and i've got an app i built that does everything from body temperature eye facial recognition the whole nine yards body language you go take a couple laps around the club and when you get back i'll tell you exactly who's been checking you out how much they're checking you out and what they think of you and they'll all have a score 
Well, that's exactly what, because quite possible I could do that. Well, that's what we do on Facebook. We know if somebody comments, likes, shares, saves, whatever. We also know if they watch your video. We know how long they watch your video. So somebody who stops and pays attention to you, wow, I, I, man, she wasn't checking you out that much, but yeah, she, 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 she noticed you. Well, great. I'm going to keep you in front of her for a while. That's what I'm trying to do is to harvest the people that are statistically more probable to work with you. The people who watch your videos, I can stay in front of them consistently. And consistency is the name of the game. Sometime go Google mere exposure effect. It's the most mind boggling, powerful concept you will ever, ever run into in the world of psychology, marketing, the CIA, the FBI, Hollywood, everybody knows what's up with the mere exposure effect. And it basically says we like that, which is familiar to us to the point that there's so many studies done, but I love this one. They took people and showed them pictures of their own spouse. And then they took that picture and they, whoops, didn't mean to slide it. Let me try that again. There we go. They flipped it. Exact same picture, but mirrored. And 76% of them liked the picture uh, the normal way better. It, it didn't like the one that was mirrored. And, and some of them found it displeasing because it's not what I'm used to seeing that yeah that's that's my no clearly not my that that's my daughter but that's that's not my daughter just that one little change and, and the studies i could sit and talk about these all day long because i'm a nerd and love to read about them it's crazy how impactful it is down to a a recent study that was done just this year earlier where they went and knocked on doors and said who's the number one realtor in this market and the answers were all over the map, no clear winner. Then they did an old fashioned, you know, Gary Keller eight by eight, eight postcards over eight weeks with an imaginary realtor. Took a stock photo, made up a name, made up the postcards, hit people with them eight times, went back, knocked on doors, doing a poll. Who's the number one realtor in this area? And over half the people chose the imaginary realtor. And I'm not saying he would have go mail eight postcards. You'll be the number one realtor in your market. No, but the perception of your market will be that you're number one. It's not that you got to be the best. You got to be the best known. It's unbelievable. So our goal was, wait a second, we got to keep you in front of people consistently. We know that all marketing is reach, impact, frequency. I got to reach a lot of people or it won't work. That's why organic is pretty weak. I got to do it consistently. They need to see you over and over and over like 22 times on average before they would feel comfortable or you would be familiar to them. And impact, what, what, what's my content? Because if all I ever put up is boring crap, scroll by fodder, junk that's in the way or annoying things, whatever. Yeah, that's my impact is not going to count for a lot. But if I see you consistently, I will start to, without even knowing why, I will start to find you more pleasing and likable to the point that pretty soon you'll become familiar. If you're going to have your content seen by a lot of people, why not have it seen by the people that are most likely to like you? And the people that are most likely to like you are the ones that we catch checking you out. It's really that simple. So we came up with this concept of a fan base because again, I have to have frequency. Yes, I could just pick all the people that and we did this for years and years and years, and we would build really custom audiences. I want people that are between these ages, and remember there was no special ad category, and had these interests and went to this church and had these kind of dogs, drove these kind of cars, drank wine, whatever. We would build these really elaborate audiences of people that were the most likely to be friends with you. The goal was, oh yeah, these people, if I met any of them, we would be fast friends, guaranteed. And that's who we marketed to. And it was very, very effective, but we can't really do that today with all the lack of targeting and special ad categories. And what we found, and when we stumbled into this, it's even more effective, was people that like your content. And this is why we lean on you so hard for video, because I need your personality. I want them to like you. 
and I want your ads in between because we got to remind them you want business, but I need you to put up content that's and see for with or about other stuff that they will appreciate, stuff that will make them like you, make them think you're professional, make them think you're a big deal. That's the kind of content that I want them to see over and over and over. But just know this, the idea behind a fan base was to have our frequency. Marketing doesn't work without frequency. To have my frequency go to people that are most likely to do business with me. So the fan base is people who engage. Now, over time, you might start to tweak your fan base and I want to raise the bar and make them engage with more of my content or watch longer amounts of videos. And there's a lot of things we can do. But when we did that very first experiment with Ryan way back when, yeah, we just used three second video views. Anybody that watched a video for even three seconds, that was enough to make them more likely to do business with you than one of your own Facebook friends. So what do I do with my fan base? You make them like you. And by the way, I'd rather not ask for business. I have a hard time with that personally. I'd rather have people see my ads. I want them to see me as a friend and an expert and an authority and influencer, and then see my ads. When I go through and show you all the most successful examples or my favorite examples anyway, it's always those kind of things. I love, I love this example just because it was 98 posts in one year. There were all videos that made somebody else the hero, the furniture store owner, the salon manager, the horse rescue person, the senior citizen center, the daycare center, the paint the pest control. That's your goal is to make them like you. Now, when I'm growing, remember growing a database, fan base, nurturing a fan base. Nurture is I want them to like me. I want them to think I'm successful. I want them to think everybody else is using me because we always want to do what everybody else does. It's the way we're wired as humans. Oh yeah. God, it looks like everybody uses Bill. I'm going to use Bill too. That's, that's what I'm trying to do on the fan base, but who do I want to put in there? Well, people who like my content. Yeah, but I'd like to put in people who like my content that are thinking about buying or selling a home. And that's when we talk to you about, and I'm told the phrase screening content confuses people, but fan base building content, whatever it is, I want to put out content. If I'm putting stuff out to a stranger, I want to put out content that finds the right stranger. So when I put out something that says interest rates going to where they are, costs people 30% of their buying power, here's how you can get back 14 of it with two simple tricks. Oh, wow. I made those numbers up, but you're the pros. You know what I'm talking about. Anything that's going to make somebody who actually is thinking about buying. I actually am thinking about selling my home. What's going to make them go, whoa, I'm interested. What's that? And then give them the advice, give them the information. Don't make it a solicitation. Make it purely informative as if you were an influencer. Put out stuff that makes them like you. Yes, half your content can be about real estate or mortgage or financial planning or whatever your business is. But half of it we should still remind them you're in the business. And by the way, her, saying the city or the area or the market, the farm that you're in is a, a great hook just because if I'm scrolling, what's the hook? What's going to stop? And if I say, bah, 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 her, oh, Hermosa Beach, what's that? I'm going to know what's going on in Hermosa Beach. That's a great way to hook people in. So that's why I like to put out the content that they want to consume. You have to just get this mental shift that what I want is I want 10,000 people that know, like, and trust me. I want to hit the same people over and over and over. That's the objective. Massive exposure. If people are always like, I got a million views. If they were organic, million views, one time, random hit, doesn't do you any good. People seeing you once is not going to do anything for you. People need to think, oh my gosh, uh, I, I see you everywhere. Clearly, he's the biggest deal in town. And by the way, more importantly, then the views were the relationships. So this concept of fan base, we're just trying to pick the people because you have to have some group that you're going to have frequency with. You got to hit people over and over. They need to see you at least three times a month. That's kind of the baseline, two and a half minimum.